So in this first chapter, we're going to look at number patterns. And in this lesson, we're going to look at real numbers, relations, the coordinate plane, and functions. We'll start with the real numbers and their place on the number line. So here we have a number line where there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the real numbers and points on the line. That means for every real number, there's a corresponding place on this number line. Now, from 1 on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we just have what are called the natural numbers. If we include 0, then we have what are the whole numbers. When you take the whole numbers and all their opposites, so we're looking at all these numbers on the top, all these blue numbers, we have the integers. Now take any two integers and write them as a fraction, and you've got rational numbers. Okay, so this includes 0.345 repeating, or numbers like negative 3.5. Okay, so all these numbers that can be written as fractions are rational. Finally, all the numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction are called irrational. Okay, this is numbers like pi and square root of 3. Okay, these are numbers that continue on forever and they never repeat. So check out pi. Pi is not 3.14, it's 3.141592626 and so on. Okay, so right here we have a Venn diagram that illustrates how the different subsets of real numbers are related to each other. So you can see real numbers consist of everything and then there's just smaller subsets within the real numbers. Uh, one thing to note is that there are actually more irrational numbers than rationals. So the irrational area really should be the biggest area. Next we're going to take a look at the rectangular coordinate plane, sometimes called the Cartesian coordinate plane, named after this guy, René Descartes. He's one of these old French mathematicians uh, that you get to know pretty well because he's one of the guys that invented calculus. The rectangular coordinate plane is simply a grid made up of a horizontal x-axis and a vertical y-axis. Any point on that grid is called an ordered pair, and that ordered pair is made up of an x-coordinate that identifies where the point is horizontally, and a y-coordinate that identifies where the point is vertically. And this plane is sectioned off into four quadrants. So we have one, which is the top right, so it goes one, two, three, four. So here's a set of ordered pairs called a relation. Anytime we have just a set of points, that's called a relation. Now notice this is just five points set up on a rectangular coordinate plane. Now here's that same relation represented as a mapping diagram. And over here on the left, we've got all the x values of the ordered pairs, and we call the set of all x values the domain. And on the right, we've got all the y values of the ordered pairs, and we call the set of all the y values of the ordered pairs the range. Notice that it looks like maybe one value is missing in the, in the range. Well, that's only because we don't put numbers in there uh, multiple times if there's repeats, you only need to list the number and then connect them with, a, with an arrow. A relation in which every input maps to one and only one output is called a function. So certain relations are functions. Okay, and a function is one of these mathematical concepts that, that's important to all of high school math. Uh, so this, this mapping diagram right here is, could also be described as a function. It's a relation and it's a function. Alright, so here we have a graph that is a function. You can tell it's a function because every x value on this graph corresponds to exactly one y value. This graph, on the other hand, does not represent a function because you can see this x value of 1 maps to a positive 1 and it maps to negative 1. So it's going to two different y values. Uh, another way to test if it's a function or not is just draw a vertical line right through your graph. And if that vertical line passes through more than one point, you know it's not a function. Another easy way to determine if you have a function or not is simply look at all the x values. So if you have a table or a set of ordered pairs, just look at all the x values and see if you have any repeats. For example, pause the video and see if you can see which relation below is not a function. Notice on relation A, the value of 1 for x gets used twice. It's going to two different uh, y values. So that tells you right there that uh, relation A is not a function. Okay, now use this graph for an example. Find the output for the input 4 find the inputs whose output is 0, find the y value that corresponds to x equals negative 2, and state the domain and range of the function. All you really need to know for this is that input is referring to the x value and the output is referring to the y value. So looking at the graph you can see that when x is 4 that the y value is 3. Now the y value is 0 in three different places, when x is negative 3, when x is 0, and when x is 2. Okay, on C, find the y value that corresponds to when x equals negative 2. So just go over to x equals negative 2, and you can see that the y value, uh, you look up and there's actually a hole in the graph. So and above it you see a solid dot. So that's just telling you that when x is negative 2, the y value is actually 3. And then the domain and the range. Well, the domain is simply all the real numbers between negative 4 and 5 inclusive. That means we're including negative 4 and 5 at the end. 
And the range is all real numbers between negative 2 and 3, inclusive. So everything from negative 2 up to 3. Okay, so when we're dealing with functions where the y value is a function of x, uh, it's a lot easier to use function notation. So instead of saying find the value of y when x is a number, uh, we'll just say find f of x. Okay, so f of x represents the output, where f is the name of the function and x is the input of the function. So, for example, uh, here's a function where y is a function of x, and we have y equals the square root of x squared plus 1. Well, that can be written as f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1. So, uh, the name of the function is f, x represents the input value, f of x represents output or the y value, and the square root of x squared plus 1, that just tells you what to do. It says, uh, take the input value, square it, and then add 1. So in this example, instead of saying find the y value when x is 3, it's just easier to use function notation and say find f of 3. So in this case, f of x is equal to x squared, or the square root of x squared plus 1. f of 3 just means you input 3 for the x. So we have the square root of 3 squared plus 1, or the square root of 9 plus 1, which gives you that the f of 3 is 10. In other words, y is 10 when x is 3. So for this last example, we're going to pay special attention to the use of parentheses when we input into functions. So in this case, we've got f of x equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 1. Uh, pause the video, find f of 2 and f of negative 2, and we'll see if we end up with the same thing. Okay, so notice the first term. Uh, you might think of this as negative x squared or minus x squared, uh, but another way to think about it is the opposite of x squared. So when you input 2, uh, you've got to think of this as the opposite of 2 squared. That means you need to square the 2 first. So that's why we put it in parentheses. So we have negative 2 squared, or the opposite of 2 squared. Uh, so that gives you negative 4. Uh, the common mistake is to make it a negative 2 squared and get positive 4, especially if you use your calculator. So just know that when you put it in parentheses, that is what you're doing first. You're squaring the 2 and then making it negative. So in this case, we get negative 4 plus 6 plus 1, which gives you 3. Uh, for the second one, f of negative 2, same idea when you square the negative 2. You do that first, you get positive 4, you take the opposite, and you get negative 4. So the only thing that changes in uh, the second one is that we get negative 6 in the middle instead of positive 6. So in this case, we get negative 4 minus 5, which is negative 9. All right, that's it for this lesson. I'll see you in the next one.